The St. Paul Nation is a community of believers that exercises its civil responsibility by voting. In preparation of our June 22nd primary day, please join us as we meet the candidates. All right, this segment is called Meet the Candidates, and we are talking about the future of New York City. And today, we have a mayoral candidate. His name is Ray McGuire. And I think everybody has the same question on their mind. Who is Ray McGuire? Who is Ray McGuire? Thank you for having me at St. Paul's Nation, Reverend. I'm honored to be here. You should know that I am a product of the church. I'm a son of the church. I grew up in Dayton, Ohio. My granddaddy was a head deacon, state Sunday school superintendent. My grandmother was a missionary. My now 95-year-old mother is a prayer warrior, so it was based on faith, which got me here, and my mother's sacrifices. So I'm honored to be here. I started from the bottom, as they say, and based on my mother's sacrifices, you know, she was a single parent, and she, along with my grandparents, raised me and my two brothers and half a dozen foster siblings at any point in time. I didn't know my dad, and I was able to get an education. I came to New York City with three things. I came with a great education. I was fortunate to be able to go to Harvard College, Harvard Law School, and Harvard Business School. Mm. I came with a great education, with a lot of debt, and no money. And so this city's been great to me personally, and it's been great to me professionally. Personally, it's where I met my wife, Crystal, my better three quarters. She's an author, has done a lot of documentary films, especially with Legal Defense Fund. We have three children, Leo, who was eight, today finishes his uh, second grade, Ella, who's 18, just finished college, I mean, just finished high school, has gone to college, and our son, Cole, who's 21, drafted into the NBA, first round, and now is a starting point guard for the Orlando Magic. So this city's been great to me personally, and professionally, it's been good to me as well. So we sent you a mission statement or a vision statement for Metro IAF. So St. Paul Community Baptist Church is a part of Metro IAF, East Brooklyn Congregations, and as you know, we're nonpartisan, um, and we simply want to know who the candidates are so St. Paul Nation can be informed when you go to the polls. So in that vision statement, we talked quite extensively about public housing. Welcome to East New York. Um, that's where our church is located. East New York has quite a bit of public housing, as you already know, and you know the state and the condition of public housing. Mm -hmm. Now, the federal government is talking about at least $40 billion in the infrastructure bill for public housing, and Senator Chuck Schumer and others are trying to move that number to $80 billion. And we think it's going to take anywhere near $40 billion for New York alone mm -hmm. in order to repair public housing from top to bottom. If you are elected as the next mayor of New York City, would you lead in the transformation of public housing? So the answer to that is yes. As I said in my church, let me, let me show you, I can't make it plain. Sure. So I have, independent of what the federal government has decided to do, is outlined to do, or trying to do, a billion and a half dollars to put towards NYCHA homes. Under this administration, the deficit has gone from $7 billion to $40 billion. And I look at all of those, many of whom are running for office, who've talked about what they will do. My question is what they have done. And the conditions at our homes are more deplorable than what they have ever been. I've gone to the homes. I've sat in the homes. I've talked to the people who are the leadership of the Tenants Association. We need to have this as the highest priority. And my housing plan, which goes from homelessness to home ownership, includes making certain that we build truly affordable housing. Today we haven't done that and that we go and repair NYCHA, and that has to be the highest priority. We need to make sure that our, that our people live in homes where they can have, live in dignity, have a roof over their head, make sure that the, that the refrigerator works and that they have water on the weekends and heat on the weekends. And right now we recognize that that's not the case in many of our homes, and we need to have the highest level of prioritization for this. So I'm completely in line. Let me ask you one more thing in the area of public housing. So once we get funding, federal, city, as you've already outlined in your plan and others are talking about that. We also need to ensure accountability. So for school construction, we have the school construction authority that they are the experts in construction. 
What do you think in terms of accountability for public housing and the rebuilding of public housing? Do you think we would need some additional oversight? Have you given any thought to how we would do this, this, this major plan? You know, you talk about construction. Part of my greatest, most inclusive economic comeback plan includes focus on this. Is go big, go small, go forward. Go big is infrastructure. And the answer is yes, unequivocally, we need oversight. And let me give you an example why. We have a stated goal in construction of 8% of those contracts go to minority women-owned businesses. You know how much we are at now? 0.5 to 0.7% mm. of those contracts. So the answer is yes, we need to transform our approach. We need to be more inclusive about those people who get involved in making sure their homes are homes of dignity. And we need to make sure that we're intentional about this, not accidental not come up with an arbitrary goal, but a goal that is mandated that we hold ourselves accountable for, meeting. And in my world, I had to manage budgets, which meant that I had to manage about 50 budgets. And if I ever came up short, you pay the price for coming up short. And today, people hold out these lofty goals and there's no accountability. We need to have that accountability. Under my administration, I want to be held accountable. I'll have a public scorecard that says how many contracts have gotten to this demographic and how many have not and what we need to do. Ray, let me ask you this. In line with affordable, affordable home ownership, and I'm not talking about affordable where members of this community cannot purchase homes. I'm talking about true affordability. So here in this community, as you already know, Metro IAF, East Brooklyn Congregation, St. Paul Community Baptist Church have worked together to build Nehemiah, which should really be the paradigm we think for the city for the state and for the country. So right here, East New York, Brownsville, there's about $2 billion of equity built in for people of color in this community who now own their own homes. Now they're able to send their children to college and have you know, a piece of the American dream, as you've talked about. Would you be willing, as the next mayor, to work along with Metro IF, East Brooklyn Congregations, to expand this model that there is home, affordable homes, and home ownership in our communities and throughout the city of New York? So the answer is unequivocally yes. You know, I've been a private public servant, and in so doing, I've been able to create more opportunity more thousandaires, more millionaires, and more billionaires in the black and brown community than all the other candidates combined. So the answer is yes, we need to focus on this. And I've also written the forward to report that talks about the systemic inequities when we haven't done this. Right. And so the answer is yes, you can find me as a partner. You will find me as a partner. No stronger advocate, bully pulpit, and capital. Both committed to making certain that, that what we did in Nehemiah Houses and what we're doing in the Bronx Common become the model not only for what's taking place in New York and what needs to take place in New York, but around the country. I'm starting here first, get it done here first, and then replicate it around the country. Ray, I've got to do this. I've said this to you in the past, that in the past, we have had elected officials who have shaken, they've shaken our hand publicly, and they've defaulted on their promises. If you become mayor, when we shake your hand, Will a deal be a deal? Will a promise be a promise fulfilled? So let me, be, let me be very clear about this, Pastor. I stayed in my job. I've been in the world of finance when nobody looked like me was in that world. Maybe one or two others. And I stayed in there for four decades. My word is my bond. Where I grew up in my church, in my neighborhood, my truth don't change. I don't have to worry about tomorrow what I told you today because it ain't changing. I am who I am. I commit to you. That is my commitment. And I've done 700 plus billion dollars worth of deals all of which could have been codified by a handshake. So yeah, when you look me in the eye and I look at you now and shake my hand, that's my deal. You don't have to question that. I am who I am. Ray, we're coming close to the end of our time together and we've spent a lot of time talking about housing. Um, what is it that you would like to talk about? We could talk about education. I wanna make sure that people get a really good sense of who you are when they go to the polls. So there, there are two, th first of all, I wanna make sure that we understand that safety is primary. All right. Right, we gotta have safety. But let me stipulate we got safety, which is a strong stipulation I get. I wanna talk about economics, and I wanna talk about education. Economics is the following. We had, in, in, in 2020, the city spent $22.5 billion. 
Minority women-owned businesses, MWBs, got eight out of 10 got less than that. And so my view, and you talk about those who've given promises, my view is the following. They, we've been outside for so long that when they give us, they give us crumbs, they want us to feel full. Hmm. I'm not interested in the crumbs. You know what, Pastor? I ain't interested in the cake. <laughs> okay. I want us to own the bakeries. And that's the goal that we have to have. Not the crumbs. Too many of us have been given crumbs because we've been outside. We get happy with that. I ain't in for that. I ain't down for that. And when it comes to education, it shouldn't be the case that we spend $26,000 a year to educate a child and in some of our communities that don't have crayons, and we spend $446,000 a year to house an inmate at Rikers. Priorities are, priorities are wrong. It shouldn't be the case I take randomly 10 black and brown boys and girls in the fourth grade and two, maybe three, can read. The system has failed our children. The economic system has not included us. Under my administration, that's going to change. We need to change. New Yorkers want to change. The same old, they had their chance. They failed. They gave you the false promises of the press releases. Now you need somebody who's got a track record of doing. And as they say in my neighborhood, I got receipts. All right. So I wanted to just ask you this final question, and then I'm going to ask you to look into the camera and tell the people why you should be the mayor of New York City. Listen, we can't wait. We can't wait for change. We can't even wait till January. So as a representative of Metro IAF, East Brooklyn Congregations, the St. Paul Nation, and all the folks who are watching, if you should emerge from this primary and you are the candidate to represent the Democratic Party, would you be willing to meet with us immediately so we can get to work before January? I'm willing to meet with you right now, right now, right now. <laughs> right. I don't need to wait. Ain't no cavalry coming, okay? Ain't no plan B. We got to have the fierce urgency of now because we are suffering. Our communities are suffering. We don't have to wait. I want to start the meeting today. I get an office. I'm in. This is me. This is my commitment. This is my commitment to you all. This commitment to you. This commitment to the people who I want to go represent. Mr. McGuire, that camera right there is all yours. Tell St. Paul Nation why you should be the next mayor of New York City. St. Paul Nation, thank you for having me. I am Ray McGuire. I'm the product of a single mother. I'm here to fight for you. I haven't been termed out. I ain't looking for a promotion. I've not served in any administration, failed administration or otherwise, and I ain't run for no office, including the one presidency. I'm here to represent you. New Yorkers need a change. They got a bad movie out there, and they were, were, were threatened with a disastrous sequel. We need somebody who's different. We need somebody who's got a track record of having represented you, making certain that you get the opportunity, making certain that you get promoted, that you get compensated, that you get paid, and that you get included and our children get educated. I'll make the streets safe, but I also need to make certain that you're part of the economy and make certain that our children get educated. And right about now, ain't nobody talking about that. It ain't about me. This is about we. Ain't no cavalry coming and ain't no plan B. I'm here to do that which I'm called to do. My word says, when the foundation is crumbling, what will the righteous do? And right now, we got to stand up, because otherwise, our best days will be behind us and not in front of us. That's why I'm running for mayor, to represent you. That is my sole focus, and that's what's in the best interest of all New Yorkers, especially the ones who look like you and me. That's what this is about. Mr. McGuire, I want to say on behalf of St. Paul Nation, best of luck to you. And if you should emerge, we look forward to working with you to rebuild our city and to move our city forward. St. Paul Nation, we're nonpartisan. We don't endorse, but you are to be informed. And as your pastor, I'm asking you to be a part of the solution. Go out to the polls and vote. Vote your conscience. Vote and be informed and let's make a difference together. This is Pastor Brawley saying, let's meet the candidates and let's get it done.